Yeah. Righto. So yeah. Kenneth, I suppose, to sum up the Paddy Ryder, how did he pull up after the sort of you know, sort of fitness test he was doing there this morning? Yeah, no, he's, he's fine. He should be okay. Obviously, he's got to get through the rest of the week, but you, you've seen him out there. He was doing what he needed to do. Um, he did the whole of the last drill. We expect he'll play. He seemed to be complaining a little bit about vision and not being able to see the ball when yeah, he went up in the air. got a helmet on his head. It's a little <laughs> unusual. So he said, oh, I just, there's a little bit of peripheral vision that's causing me some... But, you know, it's the first time he's put it on. So it, it, it's it's precaution. It's it's more for, for Paddy to feel safe enough in and... Right now he's playing. So by the end of the session, he sort of felt more comfortable with that. You know, I should have brought the vision in. If I showed you the vision in the last drill, you'd have said he's playing. He was marking the ball. He was jumping at the ball. He was doing all the things he needed to do. And one hundred percent, unless something changes, he's playing. Will he wear the helmet in the game? Yes, he will. Unless we get to Saturday and he says, "No, nah, I don't want that," which could happen because it is. I said it's more about Paddy feeling like it's it gives him a bit of protection. Um. Yes, not Paddy. Not Paddy. Yeah, last year. No, it'll be Paddy, be wearing the helmet. <laughs> we can keep talking about Paddy if you want. But last year, I think in your last press conference, we were talking about this morning, you said you had to go and do a bit of soul searching and fix some things over your off season. Yeah. You've had the summer now. You sit here before round one. Can, can you say that you think you've fixed the things and found the things that you needed to find? Yeah, I'd be a bit foolish if I sat here and said no, wouldn't I? But we think we've, you know, we've made some adjustments. You've seen us play through the JLT. Everyone, we were exposed a little bit. You know, we've we've scored a little bit freer. That's there's no doubt about that. We've conceded a little bit of score, but I feel like we've um, made some some significant adjustments to game style. We've made significant adjustments to, to coaching panel, and we've made significant adjustments to the playing group. So we're expecting some some newness about us come Saturday. Was it a difficult thing for you to do to? move on from some things player-wise, game style-wise in that period? Yeah, it always is a little difficult, but you've got to keep challenging the space of we, we want to be better than where we were and we didn't want to be mid-table. We wanted to try and achieve a higher results than that and that's what we're setting out to do now. How did you come to being at peace with like the why so in terms of why you faded and why your team was where it was? How Was there a moment in the off-season where you realised, right, this is the reason that you think? Yeah, I think there's no doubt when you reflect and you do the whole season review, which is what we do every year, and then you you make some decisions that you have to make and you know you, you spend plenty of time checking on some stuff, but then you come to a moment where you go, you know what, I reckon that's where we've got to go and we've got to go there together and we made that decision pretty early on and that's what we did. And after the North game, I think you said you could have up to six new places. I was right. Yeah, I was right, we've got six. I'm confirming we've got six new faces. We've got 11 players playing round one that did not play round 23 last year. What a challenge is that? Sorry, what a, what a challenge is that? Makes it hard for Melbourne to predict what we're going to do. Because <laughs> we don't know what we're going to do. So it's, it's really, oh, it looks incredibly exciting. There's but, no doubt about that. So, Ken, so Drew, Rosie, Butters and Dersma will, will all play? They certainly will in their first game. What an exciting time that is. You know. What gives you confidence that they can actually yeah, well, they're young people and they, they're usually pretty bulletproof young people. They, they have a lot of confidence in them, themselves. They've had a pre-season where they've played and trained and done everything amongst AFL players the whole, the whole pre-season. We've seen their form through JLT against the, the next best thing, that's opposition, and they've done really well in that. So, uh, you know, we're really comfortable that they're ready to go. Drew, he's a slightly different, he's a more mature player, but the three younger boys are, you know, High picks, fantastic, and um, you know Parks, Jeff Barker, and Jason Cripps have made some change to our team for us, which is really exciting. Can you expect that when you picked them? Would you? I mean, the three top to play round one is pretty. Oh, I, don't, I don't think you could ever sit there and say, "Well, we think all three we're going to play round." But but I've always said that I think first round picks now, more often than not, they they nearly play. You now I think I'm talking top ten, top twelve picks. I think they almost always. If they're going okay and they're injury free and they've had a good run, they're more often not going to get in the teams. And I think if you go through the the players who were picked last year, you know, and you, you were to read through them now, I'd say most of them are going to be thereabouts come game time. Can you say that we always want to temper expectations with with picks, but can you say that those the three draft picks in particular and Drew can they have? a noticeable impact straight away? Yeah, they're not picked because they're young and they're not picked because they're high draft picks, they're picked because they can play really good football already and we think they can certainly have an impact straight away. And you know, Whether that be in pressure, whether that be in ball use, whether that be in 
um, just team care that I'm sure they can have an impact straight away. And you know what a great place to play your first game, MCG. So it's pretty exciting. So when and how did you tell them? We told the whole group this morning um, in a in a group chat. Uh, we just sat up in front and talked about the the newness, the newness that's that's been created and the, the excitement that's been created all pre season and and that we were actually going to have you know six debutants for for the footy club and you you put Scotty in that uh, Lysette and Burton in that as well you know and Sam Mays just missed so it could have been seven so it's pretty exciting. How long does a jump for presentation take? I think we're going to start about eight thirty Saturday morning. <laughs> We'll work our way through it because some of our presentations have been pretty big too. We've had some um, some some greats of the club at times come in and present jumpers. This year we'll we'll do it slightly differently again, but it, it's, it's it could be a long it could be a long build up to the game, but not not so much for us, but for the boys themselves. I reckon they'll be pretty keen to get out there. Is there a risk with playing youngsters with some of the other teams that play a lot of inexperienced kids when they sort of develop a bit of battle scars if things don't go their way early? Do you try and guard against that? Yeah, I would. it's always a risk, but there's a risk whether you play youngsters or not, but. I've always been quite bullish about playing young people, always have. That's just the, the way, you know, I think as a, as a club we've been pretty prepared to play our young players as soon as they're, they're ready and, you know, we back them in and I think that gives them also great confidence that they can go on and develop good careers. We've done over my time with Ollie and Pow Pepper and Marshall and people like that, we've we've pretty much played them. Jarman Impey even, who's not at the club anymore. Uh, I think we, we haven't hurt any of those players. I think it's a... There's a mindfulness about the number of players that we're putting out there together, but I think you know we're we're backing in saying that's what we want to do. How's Marshall going? Yeah, he's going okay. We'd um, he's been building. He's built had a really strong pre-season. We expect that his season will be pretty solid. He play Sunday. Yeah, yeah, he play Sunday. Ken, what are your thoughts on the? I nearly give you the whole team now. I've got to <laughs> <laughs> I read the team out from the back line. Yeah, than we have Jonas. <laughs> So, Dougal Howard, is that a decision that's been made yet, or is that sort of going to be later in the week whether he... No, nah, that's, that, look, that's been, that's um, pretty much been made, but I'd, I'd rather not talk about that one yet, because yeah. um, clearly I'm going to be going to talk to Dougal about it first. Fair enough. Um, the runners will can, so it's been a bone of contention, not just this week, but, you know, during the whole pre-season, Alison Clarkson put it back on the table this week. Have you got clarity around... The runners' rules, and are you comfortable with how they are this season? Yeah, well, I, my clarity is that uh, we were we were told some time ago what the runners' expectations were going to be, and the rules regarding the runners, and we've we've used them through the preseason. I'm comfortable enough to know where they're at right now, and we've practiced them, we've been prepared for them, we've had plenty of knowledge on that it was going to happen, and uh, you know, comfortable enough to go forward with the current situation. Is it an issue? That you've got four debutants that like not being able to get those messages out to those guys, but does it help that you've got so many experienced players? Obviously, you you know Tommy Jones and captain, but you know Travis Bowe, Tom Rockliffe, you've got all these experienced leaders around the young guys. Yeah, look, we have, but it, I mean, I can understand the challenges that some coaches have faced, but we're, we're comfortable enough that with our with our group that that we've prepared for it. We've been given enough time to lead into the season with it, so we we've educated our players as best we can. Does that mean it'll be perfect? I'm not sure, but. Young players make mistakes. I reckon sometimes it's best to leave them alone when they make mistakes anyhow, so maybe it's a good thing. Do you need early results to sort of help everyone calm down and, and not try and jump the gun with where you're trying to head? Yeah, I mean, every, every team does. We always want to get a season away to a positive start. We know, understand we've got a big challenge this week. We've got Melbourne at the MCG. Everyone's predicting a probably a top four and above finish. We look forward to going over there and beating them. Do you think there's, there should be a level of understanding, though, from fans and stuff that you are where you are, given the offseason no, information? No, I don't. I think the expectation upon us is that we start this season wanting to play finals. No different to any other season. That's what we expect of ourselves. Kevin, with a couple of knocks to Paddy already, the acquisition of Lars is looking pretty smart at the moment. How happy have you been with him? Yeah, we've been very happy to be honest. Um, you know, to have the two rucks, particularly with the centre bounce rules and stuff that's come in, it's you know it's pretty important for us to have dominant ruckmen in there. And we've got two blokes who we think are an elite ruckmen, so we gives us a good opportunity in that space. But you know, the opposition we've got a pretty good one this one too. So Max is going to be hard work for both the boys. But yeah, you know, it's it's looked okay. But look, Scotty wanting to come home is, is a bonus for us. Seems like in the, the balance of the two, maybe Wright has been spending more time forward than than last impressive. Yeah, and that's what you should expect. You know, Scotty's 26, Paddy's a bit older, and um, we, we think he can hit the scoreboard and be quite dangerous for us, you know, up in the front. And when he goes in the ruck a bit fresher, we're hopeful that that will give us an advantage as well. What do you learn about yourself in the off-season? Oh, you always, you always reflect and you always you try to make yourself better prepared. Certainly done all that, you know, first time I travelled overseas, 
looked at some opportunities in some course overseas and you know spent a lot of time thinking about connection and leadership and what what good leadership looks like and what good people and how good people act as good leaders so I think you know I've learned a lot in that space I reckon but you're six weeks you're six years into your coaching and I've said this before to someone six years into your coach I'm a better coach there's no doubt about that there's plenty of people out there who would question that but <laughs> I would say today that I'm a much better coach than I was in year one and certainly in year two and three and four, I think every year you do this job, you're a better coach. And I think that's where the industry's got smarter. I think the industry understands that, that it's a pretty tough job that we do, but it's one that you get better at the more experience you get. So that give you a lot of self-confidence? Yeah, I, look, I don't, I don't have any problems with belief in what I'm capable of, of doing for the club. And more importantly, it's, it's the other way. It's more important that the club believe and the players believe still that, that as coaches, we're the right people to lead them, and I'm sure they do. Can you put it broad terms? When you look at last year's fade up, if you call it that, and you say, what do we rectify? How do we change this now? Is it, do we need to play faster football? Do we need to be more accountable? Is, can we be simplistic about it and say, this is what fell down last year? Just, but I think we certainly need to score. We need to score more. Yep. You know, that's one of our key ingredients that we, we defended really well through last mm-hmm. year. No, everyone ex- accepts that, but we need to score a bit more because it's 70. 70 points a game, 70 plus points a game, you're not going to win many games of football and the rules have now opened it up again to even probably a touch higher scoring. But the start of the year will be higher scoring, everyone expects that, and then it'll work itself out. So it'll be interesting, but we definitely need to score a bit more. Do you feel the pressure personally, Ken? No, not... It'd be wrong to say you don't feel pressure or performance, but that's the way you mark yourself. You, you expect to win and you expect to go out there and perform at a really high level all the time. So. Is that pressure, or I'm not sure it's pressure, but it's an expectation upon myself and upon everyone that, that works at the footy club. We all expect to win, so the pressure from outside's not not such an issue for us. I guess, I guess you're the head coach, though. You're, you're the figurehead at the top of the whole thing. Yeah, but you understand the game, too. I think that's really important. You understand that if you're not winning, there's people question certain things, and if you are winning, they, they tend to leave you alone. I think you could do anything if you're winning. It wouldn't matter whether you turned up on game day, I reckon, sometimes, as long as you win. What's the pass mark for this team? Uh, we set out to make the finals. That's what we, we, you know, we say that every year. We, we don't, ex, don't expect it to be any different this year. Our starters, but I, if, if you didn't ask every coach at every club this year at this time what you expect about your season and they didn't say they expect to try and make it to the finals, I think there wouldn't be many getting past that first conversation. And Hamish and Ollie, Hamish playing Friday night at the South Trial? Yeah, 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 Hamish, that's another great story. He's, going to get his first official game back, well, official trial game, um, back on Friday night. And Ollie has done really well. He said he'd push for this week if we really wanted to. I said, we're not really wanting to. Mm-hmm. So sort of round three with him, what's your chance for next week's game? Well, if you spoke to him this morning, he said I was pushing for this week. And, you know, so I look, we'll be cautious, we'll be careful. He's done really well. He's training, he's doing all the stuff that he needs to do now. So it'll come a point where he says, I'm ready to go. And... And the doctors will say, yeah, he's ready to go and we won't hesitate to pick him because so he's our done, captain. He's done contact stuff? Yeah, he's out there um, doing some overhead marking and some, some tackling and stuff. That's, that's the progressions now. And that builds up quite quick. But there'll be, no, there'll be no test better than when he goes out there to play properly. And just one last one, Ken, Charlie Dixon, what's um, his sort of status? Yeah, Charlie's uh, still struggling with his, with, his, with his leg. He's had, you know, he's had some setbacks in that space. He's, um, he's in really good condition um, as far as his weight and shape and everything else goes, but his legs just still holding him up a little bit. Now the hard part about Charlie is to give you a time frame because it, you know, once he gets running without too much issue, he'll progress really quickly because he's in pretty good shape. So, is it another two weeks? Is it another four weeks? I, I really can't sit here and be accurate enough for you. So I'd just say, look, we wouldn't expect Charlie to play between. I wouldn't have thought before four to six rounds, four to six somewhere around there, I would imagine. And that's if everything stays good. What about Brody? Brody's going really well. Um, uh, Brody may have given his hammy a little nick this morning. That might be one issue. So uh, he's uh, just come off training early today. So he would have played tomorrow night. Uh, sorry, Friday night, but that won't happen probably as we sit here now. But I haven't got all the information. So if that's the case, it would only be one week and he'd be available for round one of sample. Any advice for people getting tats if you can? Not much. Just. Don't uh, get tats on me. I'm not a very attractive looking person, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken.